Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I thank God that uh, His presence is here this morning. And I thank God uh, that He's given me this opportunity to stand before you all uh, as we uh, worship Him together. Uh, let us continue in our study of Acts. I'm going to turn to Acts chapter 9, verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Praise the Lord. Uh, last uh, week, Menu uh, shared with you about um, Acts chapter 9, the first nine verses, where he spoke about the conversion of Saul, who became Paul, or who was already Paul, but he was known as Paul uh, after his conversion more widely. And um, he spoke about uh, how God uh, or Jesus appeared to him and asked him, uh, uh, told him that it is hard for him to kick against the goads. And, um, and he elaborated on that. I was, my, uh, my plan or my thought was to continue in, in that topic and just read further down to verse 15, what I just read today. Um, so what, what is being, uh, what I, the verse I just read was after Saul was converted, he was, as we all know, uh, he was blinded because of the bright light that he saw when Jesus appeared to him. Uh, they led him uh, to a, uh, the house of uh, somebody called Judas. And, and, um, and uh, God appeared to a different disciple named Ananias, who was also living in um, Damascus, which is where Saul was headed, and he was staying there, and and God appeared to another disciple of God, Jesus. Uh, his name was Ananias. And Jesus uh, told him that rise up and go to uh, this house of this person called uh, Judas who lives on a street called Straight. And his name is Saul of Tarsus. And he made sure he said Saul of Tarsus in case there was a confusion. And he said, behold, he's praying. And... Um, he said, I have, he has seen a vision that somebody called Ananias is going to come and pray for him, and he's going to receive his sight. Ananias was immediately scared, and he said, Lord, I've, uh, are you sure? Because um, I have heard that this man has done many evil to the saints, to your saints at Jerusalem. This, and he said, I actually heard that he is now, was on his way to Damascus, with an authorization from the chief priest to tie up or bind up all those who call on your name. And he put it back to Jesus. And he said, on your name. And so are you sure you want me to go minister to this person? And the Lord said, that's the verse I read. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So with this context, um, I was going to talk about this topic of being a chosen vessel unto me, being fit for the master's use. I mean, it, it's even more amazing that uh, what is being said here, because if you think about what, who Saul was, right, and Minu cover, covered some of that, how he was, I mean, even the first verse of that chapter says he was breathing out threatenings and slaughter. He was no ordinary uh, opposer of Christ. He was just, uh, he was just, had, had a zeal for, for uh, just uh, 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 opposing the church and the move of, of God. And such a person, Jesus is saying, that I have chosen him as a vessel for me. 
So now the question we have to ask ourselves is, I know this topic, I, before I launch into this, uh, topic uh, has uh, p potentially some controversies or just, you know, uh, predestination and all of those that kinds of things. I am not going to go into those uh, topics that takes a long time to discuss. But so just I w hope you'll just stay with me and just focus on being a chosen vessel. So, so Paul, what, so God is really saying that even though he was an enemy of the church, I chose him as a vessel that I will use for a certain purpose. That no matter what he looked like at prior to his cho choosing, no matter that he was an enemy to me and killed my own people or had my own people killed, he is still chosen to me. Okay, so hold your thought there. Sorry, I'm dropping things. Um, so let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 18. I'm going to read the first few verses. The word which came to Jeremiah unto the Lord, saying, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the, we uh, the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not, cannot I do with you as with this potter, says the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced Turn from their evil. I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. So you have to understand this passage in the context of Israel, as it's written here. But it really applies to the New Testament and the Old Testament. God is showing Jeremiah uh, a vision of, of the potter who is making a vessel. Imagine a potter on the wheel. He's making a vessel. And, and as he was making this vessel, it kind of just broke in his hand. And... And then the potter kind of reformed that clump, lump of clay and made it into another vessel. Okay, this, this is, uh, and I'll come back to this, this ties to the first chapter of Jeremiah where he, God told Jeremiah that before I formed thee in your mother's womb. So it's in two words, two key words. I, because before I formed thee, that means God is the one who formed Jeremiah. And I knew thee. That I knew, just like he said about Paul, I knew Paul before he became a persecutor. I knew I formed him in the belly. And he was sanctified. So here though, in Jeremiah chapter 18, he's saying like Israel, I, he, was, he was making a vessel, but he said, uh, so it broke and he made another vessel, right? So he's saying that if a nation who I intended to be uh, uh, just like uh, he talks about the Pharaoh in uh, Romans chapter 9, these are all very hard concepts to understand, okay? I'm not saying I fully understand it. But it says in Romans chapter 9 that God had fit the Pharaoh as a vessel of wrath, of destruction, and, and he used the Pharaoh, who was a vessel of wrath, for, uh, to bring glory to the name of God. Okay? So we, as Gentiles, were 
this vessel of wrath and destruction. And God, as he made that vessel, that vessel, we were that vessel, okay? We were the Gentile who were fitted for wrath and destruction. But it says, as it says here, if any nation, they turn away from the evil that I thought to do them because they made this vessel, uh, God made this vessel and and uh, he, that vessel would have been headed for destruction unless it repented. So just like that. So then that is like the vessel who broke in his hands and he remade it into a vessel of honor. So the vessel of destruction, if you'll bear with me, if it repents, God remakes it into a vessel of honor that he will bring into his great big house, which I'll read about in a minute. Okay, so you all with me? So we were Gentiles who were vessels of destruction. And, but God, in his mercy, because of the great plan through the blood of Christ, reformed us because we repented, as it says here in Jeremiah 18, repented, and he made us a vessel of honor and brought us into, the, into his great house. Okay, it also says, and it's, I believe this is talking to Israel, but if there's a nation who I wanted was a chosen vessel, if it do evil in my sight, I will pluck it out. I will repent of the good that I thought to do them. That he will change his mind if that vessel did not repent. And he would change his mind. Maybe that is a vessel also that broke in his hand and he reforms it to something else. I'm not going to go into that topic. As I said, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, theological debate you could have about it, but that's not what I want to focus on, is after we were formed, reformed by God as a vessel of honor and placed in this great house, God has a purpose that he had for our lives, for his use. And that's what Paul, uh, God, Jesus is saying to Ananias about him, uh, about Paul, that he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name unto the Gentiles. So you have to think for yourself and you have to wonder, what if Paul, even though when he saw this vision of Christ, he refused to hear the voice of Christ. And many of us, when you know, we have not seen, might not have seen such a vision, right? And heard a direct voice from God. But many of us had the revelation of Christ in our heart and we came to this way and we became a disciple of Christ, right? And we, God reformed us into a vessel of honor from the vessel of destruction. And he brought us into his house. But that choice is still ours, I believe. God did not bring us into this covenant with him by force. He did not bring us into this covenant with him by coercion, by against our will. We chose this way. But God still spoke to us and gave us, even though we were a vessel, if you remember, the vessel that was one for the one for destruction, he, his mercy, he, in his mercy, it's, uh, he spoke to that vessel to see if it will repent. And because that vessel responded to the call like us, he chose to remake us, right? So the question is, did we make that choice to follow him? And so if we did, uh, let us turn to, I'm going to read a couple of verses real quick. Um, bear with me, I'm reading a lot of verses today. Um, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 5. And then I'm going to read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 and 21. So 1 Thessalonians 4, two to, uh, 3 to 5. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, or that means evil desires and lusts and passions, even as the Gentiles which know not God, or like the Gentiles 
who are fit for destruction. Okay? And now, uh, 2 Timothy 2, verse 20 and 21. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of God and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, but some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's house, prepared unto every good work. So this is not a question of whether you are a chosen vessel placed in the house. Okay, there in the house itself that this is the kingdom of God, in the family of God, that the vessels that are made... Uh, made for this uh, are for headed for destruction are not in the house this is speaking to the believers who are in the house of god that were either for honor or for dishonor how do we bring honor or dishonor to god how do you bring dishonor or honor to your family's name right if we act contrary to who we are if we do things that uh continue to bring embarrassment to ourselves or employers right in a worldly way we bring dishonor so it's not a question that i work for a certain company right i am part of that company but if in my position with the company if i do things that bring uh, shame or dishonor to that company i am like a vessel that is of dishonor but if i do things that bring honor to that company i am a vessel of honor right so so this, this is not a question of are you, this, this is not talking about, uh, you know, vessels that are outside the house of God, right? So just to, because this is so important, this is talking about vessels that are already in the house of God. And the question is, there are so many vessels, gold and silver, wood and earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. After we have brought, been brought into the house of God, as we read in Thessalonians, have we followed the desire of God, which is of sanctification, to abstain from the lust of this world, to be cleansed so that we are not following what we were called from. We are not resisting the call of God to be used for his purpose. And this is why he called us, so that he can use us for to bring glory. Just like the Pharaoh we talked about, who was outside the house of God, right? He was part of a kingdom that, that was contrary to the nation that he called. And he that vessel of destruction, God used to show his wrath so his name may be glorified, right? So he brought, but those, we were outside the house of God and brought into the house of God. And we now have an obligation or a choice to make. Will we bring honor or dishonor to his name? Will we cleanse ourselves from lusts and all the things that are contrary to God? And will we submit ourselves? Just like I said, Paul had a choice. Everybody had a choice. When he spoke to Jeremiah in, in, uh, uh, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, he said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest, Forth out of the womb I sanctify thee, I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. And then Jeremiah said, Our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I'm a child. So God said, Say not, I am a child. My time is going fast. Uh, I'll invite the worship team to come up. Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I sa shall send thee. Whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. So Jeremiah could have said, God, I, I am too afraid. Like Moses, he was afraid. Because he said, I stutter. He could have resisted the call of God. The question is, are we resisting the call of God for the purpose that he called us? What are we going to do with our lives? What choice will we make with our lives? In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25 and 26 and 27 says, See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not, who refused him that spoke on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, and now he has promised, saying, 
yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifying the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. If, as I have been saying, God is, is, God is speaking to each one of us to be a vessel of honor, to be used completely for whatever he intends in our lives, whatever that may be. See that you do not refuse the voice that is speaking to you as you can be a vessel of honor. Um, as, I know, as, I, as, as I am saying this, um, I am reminded of Pastor Bond who gave his only, uh, his whole life to serve the poor and needy, the ones that had nobody. And I've spoken to him many times. I was struck by his uh, meekness, uh, his humility, and how he, uh, you know, he was, he loved this church. He was uh, very uh, encouraged by our love and our support. He loved when we came to our uh, uh, meetings, how much, uh, how, uh, how we prayed. And he was just really uh, impacted by that. Um, anyways, he gave his whole life uh, for uh, uh, you know, whatever choice he had, he gave it up to serve the poor and needy. Uh, and as you all know, he's been uh, suffering from COVID the last month. And, uh, and he had took, taken a turn for the worse. And this morning, just a few minutes before I came up here, I uh, got the news that uh, he went to, uh, to be with the Lord this morning. Um, I know that God is with, uh, was with him, is with his family, and that he is with his master uh, this morning. Um, um, if anything we can take away from his life, let us understand the voice and the call of God upon each of one of our lives. What will we choose? Will we choose to be a vessel of honor or of dishonor? Will we choose to glorify the name of God? That we will use every effort, every energy we have to serve Him uh, in whatever way He calls us. May His name be glorified.